Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, so next up, I have a request for a couple of blanket chests. Uh, these are for family members. This isn't a, a paid gig or, or anything along those lines. Um, but I do give a shout out to Glacier Hardwoods, who continues to sponsor my videos, which I'm super excited about. Um, in the process of, of figuring out what the design for this blanket chest was going to be, one of the images that I, I had access to and, and was able to show these family members was a picture of the Wood Whispers blanket chest, the one with the hidden drawer, the green and green inspired one. And they really liked that style and design. Um, now, obviously, I couldn't just go build Mark's green and green inspired blanket chest and put it out here on video and create my own plans. That, that would just be totally wrong, and I wouldn't do it. Um, so I, I did reach out to Mark and, and had a brief conversation with him. And what I'm hoping to do here is create enough changes to that version uh, to, I don't know, I guess you could say kind of make it my own. There's just so many different versions out there. Um, but hopefully stay enough away from, from Mark's uh, where he's comfortable with the plans that I produce and, and what I put out here on video. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to move forward and, and create this blanket chest. Now what I have behind me here is a whole lot of African mahogany. And like with any project, we're going to start with the milling. Um, but where this gets tricky is my local hardwood dealer had two boards uh, that are just gorgeous, but they're 13 inches wide. And if memory serves me correctly, I think that the sides on this need to be around 15 inches wide. So I have to get a little creative here with, with the side glue ups and I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do there. Um, but I need to get lumber milled anyway. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to go ahead and mill up some lumber. Okay, now I got all the parts cut and milled. Uh, they're still rough length. Um, I'll come back and, and trim the panels up when we're all done. Um, and I know it's hard to see on the camera, but I've got a nice grain match going on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get these panels glued up tonight. Uh, and I, of course I've got, what, eight panels to do. So um, I'm gonna get these glued up and I will see you all in the morning. So now that we got the lumber all milled, it's time to lay out and cut the finger joints. And I built this little sled. Uh, it's certainly nothing fancy. I'll take a couple of still pictures of it here and, and show you, um, but it's really nothing fancy. Pretty much just a, a small sled for the dado stack. Um, and I went ahead and laid out what I wanted for the finger joints and did a test cut. Um, and I'm actually pretty happy with the way that those go together. Uh, and then I adjusted the blade height for my actual material. Um, and I'll be looking for, oh, I don't know, maybe an eighth, maybe an eighth heavy, uh, the fingers to protrude. So we round those off, it, it'll look nice. Um, and on these sample pieces, I've also marked everything top. And, and of course this is out. So that will orient on my pieces as well. These are exactly the same width as my, my actual pieces. So that's how everything will, will come together. Let me uh, 
turn the camera off for a minute and, and get the pieces actually pos positioned in the jig and uh, we'll start making some joinery on these case sides. Okay, this probably seems like a little overkill, um, but you really only get one chance at these, so I wanted everything to be secure. If it takes me an extra minute or two to get everything set up, that's okay. Um, this is why I put the, the tall fence on this sled, was so I had good places to clamp to. Um, I used my, my jig, or my uh, template, if you will, to line up and make sure everything was spot on. So I will make, I'll make this first cut, and then I'll set it up to make the second cut, and then I'll, I'll hog out the middle afterwards. And I'll continue to use the jig, setting it up as we go along. So now it's just a matter of, of pushing these through. So there you go, the, the joinery is, is pretty much complete for the case. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, everything just came together really nice. Now I threw a bunch of clamps in here um, just to make sure that I didn't have any touch up stuff that needed to be done and all my gaps actually closed up really nicely. Um, so next up is grooving for the bottom panel. Um, and obviously I'll, I'll pull all this apart and, and that's what we're going to do next. The other blanket chest is, is back here behind me and it's in exactly uh, the, the same place as this one is. So grooving for those bottom panels is what's next. Okay, so for the grooves in the bottom, I'm coming in uh, about an inch uh, and I've stopped on an inch and I went ahead and, and, and plunged this ahead of time. So I have natural stop and start points, which frankly just makes it easier with this router um, because with the dust collection on it, it, it just gets hard to see. I am going to do this in two passes and the side panels, they just go all the way through. So those aren't a big deal, but the long panels have a start and stop point on them. And that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so I'm just going to spend the rest of the evening tonight squaring up these ends in the stopped uh, dados for the bottom shelf and be ready to get my measurements for that bottom shelf in the morning. So next up, all of these fingers get a pillowing effect or a roundover. So I've just set up my trim router uh, with a little eighth inch roundover bit. And I'll, I'll give, get all the bulk of it off and then I'll, I'll hand sand to get the final look I want. Okay, so to assemble the case, I need to create all the little square holes for the plugs. So that's where the hollow chisel mortiser is going to come in handy for me. Um, I, I kept my templates that I used to make all of those fingers um, located where the, where the holes go. And I'm just going to use my templates on each one uh, to locate those. So just making a couple of square holes here with the hollow chisel mortiser. So with my template attached, uh, all I did was I took a 3 8 punch for this and came down through my template and tapped on it and got the location for where that plug goes. 
and I can get the clamps and the template off. And I just, I got my center based off of the marks I just made. Now all I gotta do is start the hole just a little bit. Just deep enough for the plug. Then I just come back with that punch, drop right into my holes that are still there, and square, just like that, punch that out. And then I just come back and clean that up with a chisel. And just like that, I've got a whole bunch of these to do. So I'm sure I will see you guys sometime tomorrow. I'll spend the rest of today uh, getting all these, these spots ready for plugs. The other thing about uh, using the brad point bit is it gives me the center for my pilot hole uh, as well. So uh, that'll make everything come together just a little bit easier. Next up, I did a dry fit so that I could get actual measurements for what I needed for a floor. Uh, and my local hardwood dealer, Glacier Hardwoods, had some aromatic cedar on hand. Um, it's, in, it, it's a little rough. It was getting down towards the end of the pile, uh, but I found some good pieces out of it. And it does have some knots and some things like that. I'm going to get stabilized before milling this. Um, so that's pretty much what's on tap today. All right, so I got all the epoxy work done and my seams look good. All I'm going to do tonight is go ahead and glue these uh, cedar panels up and then uh, catch you guys in the morning. Okay, so there's the basic box done. Um, I'm going to assemble this off camera. You guys have, have seen that before. Uh, for the screw holes, I am gonna oversize each one of those screw holes uh, and then a, a normal pilot uh, on the, where the threads go into the other panel. So it will have room for movement. Um, and that's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Uh, when we come back, these will all be assembled and we'll either start the lids next or the base next, I'm not sure, but I wanna to try to wrap it all up in one video if I can, so uh, it will be a busy video. So until next time, guys, take care.